All right, so we're down at the Southern Steer in Orlando with Buddy. Buddy manages the shop down here, and he's going to take us through the process of some of the cool stuff they make. Uh, and we're going to get started on the Atomic Pig Turds. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm just, I, I don't have any already ground pork, so we're going to break down a pork butt and uh, get it through the grinder um, and prepare a, uh, a batch of the chorizo sausage that goes into our signature item, the Atomic Pig Turd. <laughs> okay, and then so what is a? We'll find out what an atomic pig turd is by the time we're done. But just a quick description right. for these so guys. A atomic pig turd. It's a it's a souped up version of a traditional jalapeno popper. Uh, we've taken the jalapeno, we've hollowed it out, cut it in half, um, and stuffed it with a cream cheese filling uh, that consists of shredded cheddar cheese, uh, some of our house seasoning, smoked paprika, um, and then we run a bead of our house made chorizo sausage down the center of it. We wrap it up in bacon and uh, sprinkle on some of our house uh, smoky barbecue rub. And it is a fantastic uh, appetizer, uh, especially when it um, comes out of a smoker. It's really good. <laughs> it does sound really good. Let's, yeah. let's get into it. All right, I'm just going to grab this camera. All right, so we're starting with the bone in pork butt. Is the pork butt the go-to muscle for the sausage you guys make yes, down here, buddy? Yes, uh, plenty of fat in it. Um, the ratio is perfect for it. Um, it's a nice, soft, tender muscle meat and uh, very flavorful. So, Couldn't agree more. The pork butt is a go-to cut on the pig. And so you were saying last week was crazy busy. You just wrapped up the Super Bowl. I wonder how many pounds of these did you guys move last week? Um, chicken wings, man, was the uh, star of the show, honestly. And we probably moved a good 175 pounds of wings, easy. Um, yeah, we uh, we had a. Uh, in-store combos built around the wings and things like that so people were literally coming in buying five pounds at a time uh, so <clears throat> it was a really good weekend for us and then uh, went right into uh, Valentine's Day and Valentine's Day is really good for us too for those folks that uh, avoid the restaurants on Valentine's Day and just cook their meals at home uh, it was a, a good Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday for us. Mm, look at that marbling in that pork butt. That's a good looking pork butt. And we're just breaking her down into chunks that'll fit through your grind right now, buddy? Yes, sir. There's your pork collar right there. That's got to be what uh, what they actually call the money cut. Um, it's the piece that's also removed to make, uh, they cure it and make capicola. Right. Out of it. It's the best part of the pork butt, in my opinion. Just because of that, that intense marbling, you get all that extra flavor kind of thing? It's crazy, yeah. All right, buddy's getting that uh, tumbler going out there for us, and we're going to run this through here for the pork butts. Look at that nice, rich marbling, beautiful looking pork the atomic pork butts and that's quite the grinder it handled that whole pork button well in 20 seconds yum I've got 20 pound bags of bottom sirloin our uh, meat supplier cleans and portions this for us because uh, the process is just long and tedious and uh, it's just a, a whole lot easier for, for them at the at the warehouse to do it for us so they're set for put into 20 pound bags, which is perfect for our recipes. So I got 20 pounds of our bottom sirloin in there, which in a grocery store setting, it uh, would be flap meat. Um, looks like a big skirt steak, but not quite as tender until we're done with the process. So I'm making our Argentine steak tips. And this is our Argentine seasoning. 20 pounds. We'll get uh, two cups 
and the beauty of our steak tips. Um, you'll also get some great little steak morsels uh, added in there. So anything that doesn't make the cut for our case, if the pieces are big enough, New York strips, Wagyu Ooh. sirloin, ribeye pieces, uh, tenderloin tails, things like that all gets tossed into this as well so you get bonus pieces of meat in there so i've got about <laughs> the little lottery pieces <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so i've got about uh i don't know maybe five extra pounds and this is our most popular um marinade the argentine so we're constantly making this that smells delicious that's for sure and so for the folks that kind of don't know what a, a vacuum tumbler is, if I was to summarize this, but you fact check me here, but that thing is going to kind of create a vacuum in there and it's going to open up the pores of the meat kind of like a vacuum sealer and then that chamber is going to spin, there will be a motor that drives it and it kind of agitates that rub Buddy put in there and penetrates instead of 24 hours you said you can cut her down to 45 minutes? Yeah, 45 minute process and uh, we've got a 24 hour marinade, tender juicy flavorful yeah, it's a that tenderizes too it does yeah there's a couple of paddles in there that kind of operate like your dryer at home okay and while it's constantly spinning around it's hitting those paddles and and tenderizing away we all need one of these at home <laughs> there's those paddles all right cool Yum, little chili flakes I can smell. Guaranteed juicy, flavorful steak bites is what this machine does for you. <laughs> That's cool. It's that easy. 45 minutes from now, we'll have delicious steak bites. But now it's time to go back to the atomic pork butts. All right, look at that pork. Delicious. Single grind on it because it's such a nice tender cut. You don't really need to do two grinds on a pork butt. Buddy's going to show us the process from here. All right, so just weighing this out, getting a right amount of pork that I'm going to need for the recipe. Uh, I'll grab the chorizo seasoning. We'll mix it up. And um, that's it, we'll go from there. Beauty. All right, so here we are adding our seasonings. Our chorizo seasoning amongst with a lot of our other sausage seasonings are made at a different facility uh, by someone who was actually uh, formerly employed. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, that's got a little zest to it. That smells good. It'll get you if you, <laughs> if you breathe it in. Um, so anyways, yeah, there was uh, an employee um, that used to work for Southern Steer. Great little story um, that uh, he's, he's shared and we kind of share with uh, our customers when they ask about the uh, seasonings. Um, the name is uh, Warface, Warface Marinades, and they also provide seasonings for us as, as well as uh, some of the marinades that we use around here. Um, when Southern Steer first opened, uh, they had a, a case that they, they tried to put seafood in and just wasn't really working out. So this gentleman was like, let me, uh, let me try and do something with, uh, with this case. And so they wanted to start putting sausage in it and they started putting um, sausages in it and the sausage went really well. And uh, long story short, he broke off and started his own seasoning company and, and now provides seasonings for the entire uh, company and all the stores. Uh, so the Warface name came up, uh, I guess, through his, uh, his daughter. And they had a little thing uh, always going uh, to where he would say, hey, show me your Warface. And she'd make this little face and it just kind of stuck and, and that's where their, their name came from. I just thought it was a cute story. That was a good I, I story. Share, share that with everybody. That's good, yeah, a little motivational story. You got an opportunity, go for it. Yeah, man, totally. It, uh, it clearly worked for them. And that smells really good. If we were to guess, I can see there's, uh, is that some bay leaves in there and some salt, paprika, cayenne, other chilies in there? For sure, yep, definitely. Yeah, you hit it right on the head. 
the uh, smell. Onions, probably what got <laughs> what got us when, <laughs> yeah. when we poured it in there. So would you describe it as mild? Were we making mild? Is it spicy? Is it, it has a little bit of a kick to it? Yeah, it's uh, it's not man. If, if I gave gave it a, a, a number on a scale, I'd say maybe five or six out of ten. Okay, everyone's liking this one then. Got yeah, a little bit of a kick. Yeah, but the smoky flavor and and it's it's really good. Yeah. Nice. So I'm gonna add a little water to it. Just to help mix it up, maybe about a cup. And then we just go in with our hands. Gosh, you guys, you don't know how smell good that smells. Warface has got this recipe figured out. Is there a George Foreman grill in here or something, bud? We can cook one of these later? I have, we, we have zero, zero cooking facilities. I have a, an oven over there which we cook a small amount of, of, of things in. It's usually used more for uh, our snacking uh, around. Okay. So yeah, we could definitely put some sausage in there to, to try. All right, that's mixed up pretty good. All right, buddy's prepping the stuff are here for us to get these beautiful trezos cased up. And that is a very cool manual FDF stuffer. A little air vent on there, that's a nice feature. Big thumbs up from me. A little trick for everyone at home, you just lube that up a little bit, buddy, so it's uh, push it down a little easier. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of those steps you don't even realize uh, nobody, nobody knows about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, when you do it so much, it just comes a habit. And yeah. That is a nice stuffer. That little handle's a good touch, too. Gives a guy a good grip. There we go, buddy's got her prepped. We'll load the horn up. That's some skill there, keeping it open with one hand and pouring with the other. <laughs> it definitely helps getting it on the horn though, otherwise it's, and well, and when you're stuffing too, right? If you catch them dry spots, it's just a mess. All right, we're off to the races here. How many years of practice did it take you to get the be able to go that smooth? Um, it didn't really take long. I wouldn't call it years. It was real intimidating to me the first time I got on it, uh, but it's it doesn't take much, man. It takes a few a uh, few rounds and. You, kind of get the technique down. Yeah, that's true. Don't let it scare you. If you want to get into home sausage making, it's not yeah. the hardest thing to do. But. It's super fun and uh, at the end of the day when you're when you're all done and, and you've got some sausage in front of you, it's a great feeling. It's a great sense of accomplishment. There it is. One big long chorizo chub before we get her linked up. So we do about six inch links. And I pretty much just do it by eye. But the uh, technique that I learned was uh, you want to do a couple of turns forward and then get your next link and do a couple of turns backwards. Perfect. We're just cutting between the links and these bad boys are going to be ready for the display case or grill if you're doing this at home. There, those beautiful trezos are racked up for Buddy's display case, and uh, so this little bit at the bottom is what you save, and we're going to turn that into the atomic pig butts. That's correct. I mean, it's not only what we use. We sell so much that I, I literally break into our links on a daily, daily basis, but uh, for this video purpose, I've got plenty here to stuff a couple of turds and, and make that happen. I like this. This is a good idea for the home sausage makers with that little bottom bit where you can up your game, make some... Oh, you can make some pig turns at home. It's a great idea. <laughs> yeah. You're like... making your chorizo sausage, your leftovers at the bottom of the stuffer, make some pig turds. 
I was wondering how these guys do a hundred of these in a day, and this is a good idea. They'll use one. What is that called? It's a cake? Pastry bag. A pastry bag? Pastry bag, yeah. So it's what the bakers would use to uh, fill donuts or ice cakes, uh, decorate cakes. Genius. I'll, this is why we do it. We learn something new everywhere as we go. Yeah, it makes it real easy when you're doing a ton of these at one time. I literally will have a full sheet pan of all of these uh, jalapenos cut ready to go. And uh, we'll just come through and we'll fill them all with cheese at one time. And then we'll, by hand, we'll lay the, uh, the chorizo. And it's just that easy. There we go, we're cream cheese, and Buddy just lays that couple ounces of chorizo on top, one by one. You guys are going to be jealous of this, but Buddy's thrown a couple of these in the oven before we started this process, so we're going to be trying these shortly, and I can't wait. And it's like 9 a.m. in the morning, we're having jalapeno poppers for breakfast. <laughs> uh, to be honest with you, I have these for breakfast every Monday and Friday with a, a co-worker. <laughs> He's got a smoker at home, so he's uh, he'll he'll smoke some stuff before he comes in uh, the, the night before, and we literally have um, either some smoked pork belly burnt ends or some jalapeno poppers. He likes to do it hot, so we, we uh, it's a wake up call first thing in the morning, something super spicy. <laughs> That's a good way to get the week started. A little Monday morning motivation. Yes, exactly. Beauty. Second last step here. Give him a wrap. That's some nice looking bacon. A little bit thicker cut, eh? Yeah, it's a standard cut. It's a 18 to 22 pieces per pound. Sometimes it might take two strips to get around, but uh, it looks like one's gonna work. All right, on to our last step, the icing on the cake. What are we using here? This is our smoky barbecue rub that uh, we put on the outside. Um, at the end of the day, the uh, the name Atomic Picture doesn't mean it's super spicy, because honestly, I don't find it to be any more spicy than a traditional jalapeno popper. Um, but there is a little bit of a kick to the chorizo that we put in it. Um, and this spicy, uh, or this smoky barbecue rub is not spicy at all. It lend, actually lends a little bit more smokiness and uh, a subtle sweetness to it too, which complements it pretty well. Do you guys sell that rub in the store, buddy? We do. That smells deadly, folks. I'm... Yeah, right when you crack this open, you can get that smoke from it. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's amazing. So this is actually a great rub for uh, ribs, pork butts, um, anything pork, to be honest with you. And atomic pig turds. And atomic pig turds. There we go. Plate it up. Looks beautiful. Genius way to use the last pound instead of just frying up and making a patty. Buddy takes it to the next level and makes an atomic pig turd. That's right. At the end of the day, perfect place for these is the smoker. No doubt about it. I won't cook a jalapeno popper any other way. That smoke flavor from the smoker, so if you got a couple of hours to kill, fire up your smoke. All right, Duncan. Here's the end result. Ooh. Not in a smoker, but uh, they're almost just as good oh, out, of, out, of, out of an oven. Our next best option. Yeah, well, so I... if you don't have a smoker, man, don't, uh, don't hesitate. You can always get it done in an oven, and you'll actually be snacking a lot sooner. <laughs> I can't wait to snack, man. Oh, this man, looks. Well, I've been smelling this place all morning, and yes, it's. Sir. Cheers. Cheers. To the Southern Steer. Oh man. I'd be looking forward to Monday mornings if oh, I was you. Yeah. Well. Damn. Friday. Tomorrow. That's right. We'll be having these for breakfast. <laughs> yeah, breakfast today. This is superb. The chorizo in there is really nice. It's not, you know, knocking your socks off with heat. 
but there's some saddle herbs that come through cream cheese miles out any heat that there is this is just wicked buddy yeah i appreciate you having me man and it's be a cool episode and maybe we'll do more like this in the future yeah man glad to have you appreciate it like and subscribe guys thanks for watching take care wicked my uh microphone must have wiggled loose while i was recording this so the audio didn't work but here's buddy pulling out that marinated steak bites the argentine steak bites we'd seasoned up earlier that's kind of the final result there uh it definitely looks like it's a marinated 24 hours those nice tenderized chunks of meat i am ever since i recorded this i'm back at home now editing it i've been thinking about this vac tumbler it's such a cool machine i'm looking forward to it i appreciated uh buddy taking the time to show us and experiment around with it He's just explaining here, there, that's one of those lottery pieces, that nice piece of filet mignon you found in there. So, uh, or a piece of a strip loin, a ribeye, or whatever kind of trimmings, buddy. It kind of looks like a tenderloin to me. But anyways, guys, that's that end product of that cool tumbler. I hope you liked the episode. If you do, give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and we will maybe make more videos like the DH custom version of Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. Smokehouses, steaks, and sausages. Thanks, guys. Take care.